In this video, we are going to make Oreo cookie mint chocolate cookies and cream ice cream. simple to make just need Oreo cookies either the plain or the mint regular whole milk whipped cream whipping cream vanilla extract I'm using honey and I'm using Malaysian pink salt you can use granulated sugar or any kind of salt table salt rock salt whatever kind of salt you want to use let's get started in this recipe, I'm actually using a KitchenAid ice cream maker. You can use a creamy or any other ice cream maker. There's some minor variations in the steps as far as whether or not you churn, like in the KitchenAid or other ice cream makers, or whether or not you freeze the base like you do with the creamy. And then there might be some difference in the steps on when you actually add the cookies, but you can figure it out based on your ice cream maker. First thing we're going to do is add one cup of cold milk. And you can either use three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar or slightly more than a half a cup of honey. I'm going to use honey. It's actually technically nine sixteenths of a cup. What I do is I pour in a half a cup and then just about a tablespoon more. Here is another trick. If you are cooking with honey, you generally want to use a light honey. This is honey that come out of my own beehives. This is a goldenrod honey. So it's very light in color, but it is so, so good. A dark honey is actually a lot sweeter. And it has more floral tones, so generally depending on what the base of it or what the primary nectar flow was from that honey so i like to use a light honey for baking next just turn your mixer on till it's all incorporated Next, we're going to add two cups of heavy cream and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Two cups of heavy cream. Next is the one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Sometimes I always do this a little too much, but hey, nobody ever complains if you have too much vanilla or too much cookies in your ice cream base. So the salt is optional actually in this recipe but I think that it kind of makes everything come out a little bit better I'm not a huge salt eater but I do like salt in this so I do about let's see if you can see this here I don't measure it out that's probably about a teaspoon of Himalayan salt goes in there then we mix it again let's give it a quick whisk
The next thing you want to do is you want to transfer your mixture into another bowl that you can put into the freezer. I like to use these, I don't know what that is, like a two quart bowl because then I can stick it inside of a Ziploc bag and stick it in the freezer. So you want to put this in a freezer for about one and a half hours. What you want to make sure is that when you take it out, the temperature of the liquid is below 40 degrees but above 32 degrees. So you might need to check it a couple of times in your freezer to see how long it takes. In my freezer, it's about an hour and a half. For the next step, you're going to put 10 of your cookies, half of the recipe, which nobody ever complains if you put too many cookies in this. So I like to use somewhere around 18 to 20. I think the original recipe that I based this off of had something like 15 or 16. And just over the years, I've increased it. But I put, as, the, as everybody does this, shrinkflation. So like the cookies get smaller, the packages get smaller, the prices go up. So what I do is I put 10 in a Ziploc bag. And then you use something like a uh, rolling pin to make these very fine. Then the second half, we do it, the other 10 cookies, but we make them kind of coarse texture. So you'll see here in a minute. Could probably also do this in a blender. I just like to do it this way. I think it's quicker. Might have left too much air in the package there. So again, what you're wanting is you're wanting the chocolate part of the cookie to be pretty, pretty fine. Flip it over, do it again. You can't really tell it because you still have the cream in there, but that is, there's no big chunks of cookie left in this. So the next thing you do, you put 10 more cookies in there you don't squish them as much. You want them to be kind of a coarse texture. And that's about the way I do that. When making ice cream, this is one of the most important steps. It's actually been sitting out a few minutes. I'm actually going to go ahead and do it anyways because I know that it should be correct. But it's warming up as it sits here, so I need to get hurried. Basically, the next thing you do is pour it into your ice cream maker. and turn it for about 20 minutes on low. So while your ice cream is churning, now would be a good time to go ahead and dump all of your cookie crumbs into a bowl, because we're about to need them here in a little bit. I usually take and just use my fingers and wiggle them around a few times and the chunks will come out pretty easy. There will come a time when the ice cream starts to set up 
And that's when you want to pour your mixing in. So let me do that. You want to give us about five more minutes. Next thing you're going to want to do is transfer this over to a um, ice cream freezer container. You can get those on Amazon. I'll link to them below in the description. They make this a whole lot easier, these next steps. The final step of this is to scoop it into an ice cream maker and then you do the final finish in the freezer for about two hours. Should make about one and a half quarts. So again, all you need to do is stick it in the freezer for about two hours. And that finishes off the consistency of your ice cream. The two hours didn't quite pass all the way yet, but I got tired of waiting. Let me just tell you, I already know what this tastes like because I've made this before. Mmm. Man, that honey just really brings out the flavor compared to sugar. You've got to try it.